Major news in the space exploration field uh, this week, uh, SpaceX uh, is planning to deployment on a quarterly basis of several uh, cargoes of satellites going up into space. And there's one institution, which happens to be a historically black one, which is concerned about this effort. James Russell, an endowed professor in Hampton University's uh, Department of Atmospheric Sciences, is here to join us this evening to talk about SpaceX's program and what implications it, crea it could create uh, for Hampton's satellite uh, uh, mission and its uh, teaching and training at the Institute. So Dr. Russell, it's a pleasure to have you on this evening. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Today, SpaceX launched this payload or their first payload of satellites going up uh, for pay uh, into the atmosphere, into orbit around the Earth. Uh, you have concerns that if this keeps up at the pace that they are intending to keep it up, that Hampton satellite program could be in some serious trouble given the convergence of a lot of things going around orbit in space. Is that, does that kind of capture it correctly? Well, it's, it's almost right. Uh, I certainly am very concerned about it. We do have uh, responsibility for a, a number of satellites in orbit right now, four. But the one that's most concerned with this launch uh, is with the AIM satellite, because AIM <clears throat> is a Hampton University mission. Uh, we're the only HBCU uh, to, to have uh, full lead responsibility for a major satellite mission. And the, the launch of the uh, SpaceX rocket carrying these payloads uh, was delayed a day. So it'll be tomorrow morning at the same time, 9.24 okay. mm -hmm. uh, Eastern time uh, in the morning, probably be launched from uh, Cape Kennedy. So my concern is, is really large that uh, with this launch, not with downstream launches, but this very launch poses a, a real and present danger to the AIM spacecraft due to a potential collision. The Hampton mission specifically, oh, oh, I know one of, it, one of its great acclaims is that it's a, it's a, a mission that helps to identify uh, destructive weather patterns. And it's helping folks in the United States to be able to foresee the way weather is forming and what kind of impact it can have. Um, but are there other elements that are important too with Hampton's mission that concern the everyday person outside of weather or have larger implications for NASA at large? The, one of the, the, the main goal of the AIM satellite mission is to study something called noctilucent clouds. Mm -hmm. Noctilucent means the night shining. And these clouds occur at 50 miles above the surface. They uh, are, capture the public attention because if you're ever at higher latitudes where they form uh, most of the time, uh, you can't miss them. And they're, they capture your attention because they're very beautiful, iridescent clouds that just shine and, and you, you just have to look at them. Uh, the, the reason they're important is because uh, the, the things we think cause their formation are uh, things that uh, humans are doing that could affect the, the clouds themselves. Mm -hmm. they, they need three things. They need cold temperatures, they need water vapor, and they need dust in order to form at these high altitudes 50 miles above the surface. So that's the whole thrust of AIM. And, and in fact, what we have found in some of our early results well, after over some time now, we've, we've been in orbit almost 14 years mm -hmm. <clears throat> collecting data with AIM. And so one of the things that we have learned is that uh, over the past uh, about 30 years, as we determined using AIM data and other satellite data, we have learned that the uh, atmosphere at 50 miles above the surface is getting colder uh, and, and also uh, it's, there's more water vapor in the atmosphere. So that's the two ingredients that you need. And then the third ingredient is meteoric dust coming into the atmosphere. And mm -hmm. we've proven that. So that's, that's why AIM is such an interest to the public. It's a great interest to Hampton University itself because uh, it's wonderful for teaching. It's wonderful for uh, basic science studies that we're all interested in. It's wonderful because we're working on a real problem that could affect the, the Earth itself. You had a career mm -hmm. at NASA, um, long-term long -term career at NASA before you came to Hampton University. Have you ever seen, and, and I know that, I guess, privatized space 
missions and exploration and um, going up into space <laughs> with private funding is relatively new. But did you ever think that you would see something like this or commercialization to to the to the form of jeopardizing other missions, other publicly funded missions? No, that never crossed my mind or any of the people on my team's mind. Uh, in fact, I would say even NASA up until in the last few years when this capability for launching large payloads, uh, that is with multi-satellite payloads came into being. Uh, and so now what has happened is we, it's, it is a real danger. It is a real major concern uh, for us at Hampton University especially. Uh, and we won't be the last one. This, this is something that's not going to go away because they're, they're planning to launch uh, these satellites, uh, groups of satellites, and this one is 143 satellites. They plan to do uh, something like that on four-month intervals into the future, and that's just for SpaceX company itself. There are other companies too, Boeing, for example. Others would be uh, wanting to launch those large payloads because it's money in it. It's a profit. And so they're doing this uh, for that reason. And, and they're doing it at, I think, the real jeopardy of uh, science and, and also uh, the collection of data that are very useful to mankind. What can be done about it? Um, because I know there's no governing body per se over space. Um, so it's tough to to make a claim like, you know, somebody stopped this. But is there something that the the academic community can do? Is there something that everyday citizens can do to alert the government government about, you know, the possibility of having a mission interrupted, particularly one that's so unique as, as the one led by Hampton? Yeah, well, of course, not only interrupted, but destroyed. That, that's my, my major concern. Um, I, I think that it's a, a high likelihood. And I just say that because uh, when you put that many satellites into the same orbit as, say, the AIM satellite, uh, if you're asking for trouble, uh, and it's a real concern, and it's especially a concern because no one has been able to uh, give me a defensible probability of collision. So they don't know what the probability is of a collision right now. Um, and I want to mention one other thing about this that not only affects <clears throat> AIM, but it can, can affect all many other satellites as well. Uh, if, we, if, for example, if one of these satellites is going to be launched tomorrow morning, 924 Eastern time from uh, Cape Kennedy in Florida, uh, if one of, if one of these satellites uh, collides with AIM, it will cause a breakup of, of the AIM satellite. Those pieces then will fly out into uh, orbit in the same orbit and collide with other satellites, and the process will continue, and you will end up with a uh, a trash dump, basically, of, of debris. And I'm not sure that people have really thought this through from that aspect, but I think it's a real possibility, and I'm, I'm very concerned about it. I think that uh, the SpaceX uh, Corporation executives, uh, who have a, a very definite money motive, uh, I think they also would be responsible, but they, there was no reach out uh, to uh, to me in, in particular to discuss what it would do to this mission. And it's the same orbit, so it's it's just a real concern. But doesn't it stand to reason that that SpaceX wouldn't want their stuff destroyed either? Why why, why does it not it might matter to them? That's a question I don't know. I I have tried to. Uh, connect with the project manager for this Transporter 1 mission unsuccessfully. So I'm not sure why they haven't addressed that point or are concerned about that point, but it's real. Again, I, I'm, I'm assuming um, that not just advocates of Hampton University, but of HBCUs at large, um, you know, would take particular interest in this. What What is it that we can do to, to try to appeal maybe to SpaceX folks or maybe to you know, NASA or, you know, some other authority to say, you know, this is a dangerous thing. And, and, and let's assume that, that the Hampton, the AIM mission gets destroyed. If the satellite gets destroyed, does that mean that all the work, all the money, all the years, all of your work is just, just gone? Is that what that means? That's exactly what that means. And I'll tell you something else about that point that you raised, which is a very good point. Uh, 
we we started uh, promoting AIM ten years before we finally got it into orbit. It's a long process. Uh, when we proposed, we proposed uh, there were forty four proposals. Uh, two were selected uh, for flight, and then only one made it, and that was AIM. And in that uh, list of uh, proposers that were selected for the top eight for consideration included organizations like our universities, like Stanford University, MIT, for example, was included in that, uh, St. Louis University was, major universities in the country. So it is a, for us to have gone this far and uh, collected this almost 14 years now, of beautiful data, and, and we've had some, some very important science results that are, there are 350 papers in the literature now that have been produced as a result of AIM. Uh, and, and then there are more. It would be a tragic loss uh, to lose this mission after coming this far and knowing what it takes to get there. You can't just propose a mission tomorrow and expect for it to be launched even a year from that time. It just takes a long time. So yeah, it's a real, it would be a major loss. So you had a question, I'm sorry, but you wonder the question was a very important one. What can other HBCUs do? Mm -hmm. At this point, unfortunately, it's so little time left. I mean, if they unless there's another weather problem, then it goes, it'll be launched tomorrow morning at 9:24 Eastern time and uh, uh, from the Cape. But uh, presidents of have universities contact. Uh, contact uh, I'm a, I have, of HBCUs have presidents contact uh, SpaceX, let them know of their concern. Uh, that would certainly be a help. I mean, the only thing that's going to change it now is is uh, pressure, because mm -hmm. what's driving this is a profit motive, uh, and they they feel like a, that they'll be able to uh, launch these satellites and theirs will be okay. Uh, you asked that point earlier about why wouldn't they be concerned too? Well, part of the reason is about half of their satellites they're launching have uh, fuel on board the satellite to control its orbit. So they can move it up and down a little bit in order to avoid collisions. Mm -hmm. But but AIM doesn't have that. And also uh, uh, the other half of the satellites they're launching do not have that kind of control. So that's the ones that I'm concerned about that would impact AIM.